I am Jeff Marker here with Jonathan Hickman and Nick Nunziata, and we all just took a look at the change up and rise of the Planet of the Apes tonight. It's amazing we've had guests now for two weeks straight and uh, Nick is actually a producer on a film that's coming out and when is it coming out? 26th of uh, August. And it's called Don't Be Afraid of the Dark and Nick is going to tell us all about that film and we're going to get your, I uh, guess, your impressions of the rise of the Planet of the Apes film which we all took in tonight. Um, but just a little bit about Nick. Nick is the founder of Chud.com. It's Cinematic Happenings Under Development. Correct. And uh, 1997? 96, 97, something like that, yeah. And uh, it has stayed the test of time. It's gotten better all the time. But your latest venture is Guy.com. Right. And that is one slick site. You guys need to check it out. I checked it out. There's a lot. It's a lot of content yeah, on there. Yeah, extremely. You get a lot of people writing and giving their, their Very views. Very diverse. And yeah, everything. Anti-Maxim. You're one of the producers of a horror film, which is based on a 1973, I believe I have that right, uh, television movie that's very highly regarded. It's called Don't Be Afraid of the Dark and the movie that you are a part of that is actually produced and co-written by one of the greatest uh, horror directors of the modern age, Guillermo del Toro. Yep. And it has an incredible cast. It's got, uh, uh, well, why don't you tell us about the cast? I mean, Guy Pierce. Guy Pierce, Katie Holmes, Bailey Madison, uh, you know, the very, a very small cast because like the original teleplay, it's, it's a really small, old-fashioned story, so what you do, instead of wowing people with the gore or, or trying to make, make giant set pieces, uh, we're focusing on character, you know, I mean, that's what, that's, what made, that's what made horror so great, is people focusing on Absolutely. mood and temperature and, and character, and then you feel it a lot more when bad things happen to them. Well, and uh, from what I've, I have not seen the original, and uh, from what I've been told, it's in sort of the same category, very highly regarded in the 1970s, in the same category of Steven Spielberg's Duel, or something like that. Were you worried about the comparisons? Because I believe there's a following for that. There is, but the thing is, it's... It, there, it's a big fish in a really small pond back then. There wasn't like so much marketing and so many movies being done in the genre, and that struck a chord with a lot of people. But because it, it, it was it was out of print, it wasn't the kind of thing they replayed a lot. A lot of people that love the movie love the movie from way back in their past, and they, and they may have hunted down copies at trade shows or whatever. But for the most part, it's a, it's a hidden gem. It's one of those things that people. It's almost like a, like an urban tale that people tell stories about, but they don't actually have yeah. the hard copy to well, prove it. Yeah, can they can they even see it? Is it available? Well, when we when we went into pre-production, Warner Brothers released one of the as their online only independent titles, and now it's out there on DVD. And of course, it's on YouTube and all that. So I mean, yeah, it's people. It has started to infect people. But one of the things about the original movie is it's so effective, and it's amazing. But it does show the time, uh, and what it did was it stuck it stuck its claws into Guillermo and people like him, Matthew Robbins, who we co-wrote it with, uh, and and they've taken all those seeds of a really great horror story and amplified it to our modern age. Sally, what do you think? We worked really hard to get it ready. This house is unsafe for a child. Who are you? And I think uh, what made the original click so much is still there, but it's definitely not that movie. Well, something I wondered about, you mentioned the, you know, the look of the film and it's grounded in reality. We don't necessarily expect that from Guillermo del Toro. He's normally great at creating great characters within this really this real fantasy realm. Well, the, the great thing about Don't Be Afraid of the Dark is that it it is a sister film in a lot of respects to the Hellboy movies and to Pan's Labyrinth. And I guess to a lesser extent, Devil's Backbone. Um, what he what we get in the original movie is you, there's creatures that exist in, in, the, in, the, in the cellar and they want the girl, but you don't really know a lot about their backstory. But Guillermo, with his crazy, I mean, he's got journals of all these different creatures and all this idea. And this is like the tip of an iceberg of so much more mythology like this like and actually a book just came out two weeks ago a, a tie-in to our movie that tells you the backstory of all these fairies and all these creatures and the creatures in our movie are just like the tip of this iceberg so while yes it does recapture the movie Guillermo has ripped his skull open and let a lot of ideas fly into this that 
this is just the beginning. In a lot well, of it, it completely, I mean, obviously I was exposed to Guillermo del Toro with Kronos, and that was the movie when I was uh, uh, younger that, that I just couldn't believe. We always said, oh, this is the, this is the, the foreign vampire movie that, <laughs> that really is odd and, yeah. and different. But um, it makes sense with Pan's Labyrinth and, of course, with De Devil's Backbone. Guillermo uh, seems to want to work children into the mix and put them I I into these situations. Yeah. And uh, I guess that that sort of uh, struck a chord with the MPAA on this it did, as well. It did. Um, Guillermo's never been known as the kind of director that attracts controversy as far as the qu what's on the screen. Um, he doesn't do sex. He doesn't do like uh, extreme violence. He doesn't do anything. It's all fantastical. So this movie, which is a dream project of his, that he wrote the original script of this in the 90s. This is not a new development. This is one of those passion projects that's finally come out um, yeah he wrote it it didn't seem like an R-rated movie we shot it it did not seem like an R-rated movie the MPAA saw it and they got slapped with an R there's a child in danger the entire running of the film just about and that's a big no-no with them you know and I thought it was just cigarettes yeah exactly right cigarettes or sex yeah. I mean you know it seems like God forbid you smoke wild. after sex oh, I know. Right. X. Oh, that's a double whammy yeah. you know? um, well you know it's it's that's difficult because I can understand to a degree the, the perspective there, and yet I think what Del Toro knows is that's where nightmares begin, yes. and that's where you know, the mythology yeah. starts to take place is when you're a child, and so it completely makes sense. Yeah. You know. Well, and I think, I, I honestly, you know, in a lot of respects, he's a big child. I mean, like, the great thing about him and how he's able to access these, these, these visions in his head is because he hasn't let a lot of that stuff go by the wayside. You know, as we get older, we have responsibilities, some of that stuff... Absolutely softens and you know it's, it sucks but it's true <laughs> and this guy has tapped into that and taken it to other levels so I think he's purging a lot of that another sad thing is this guy I mean we, we have a finite amount of time with these filmmakers these visionary filmmakers you know so what we selfishly wanted to do is make a lot of movies and Guillermo has been clogged for years I mean like he hasn't made a movie in, in a long time because of the Hobbit and then Mountains of Madness got delayed and now he's finally shooting Pacific Rim but don't be afraid in a lot of respects is kind of giving people a taste of that because it's been out of their diet for a while mm -hmm. so you know we need guys like him out there we need the, the really really strong visionary guys and and Guillermo is tip of that I mean he is I mean, I don't think we've seen the surface of what this guy's capable of. Well, the trailer for the film is in of itself pretty terrifying. I mean, I watched it and I thought, gosh, I don't want my daughter getting anywhere near the room when I'm playing this thing. So an MPAA uh, R rating uh, could be actually a badge of honor for Absolutely. this kind of production. And, you know, I mean, the box office for R rated films is coming up. I mean, look at what has happened this year. I gotta ask you this. Give us your war story on the project. Uh, you know, how did uh, no offense, but how did Nick Nunziata from Atlanta with Chud.com uh, get involved with Guillermo del Toro yeah. and produce this movie with Katie Holmes and Guy Pearson? I mean, give us the story there. Well, Guillermo and I hit it off ages ago. I, I covered his work extensively on Chud, of course. We, we met at a Comic-Con. Ten years, eight years ago, something like that. Hit it off really well. Um, he knew I was a creative guy. Obviously, I knew what he was, and we started sharing ideas. We actually had two projects that we worked on together: two, a big film with New Line that didn't come out. We, we were in development hell, and then a TV series. So we worked together on a variety of projects for a while, and nothing, you know. How it, are you involved in that from the creative? Because you're a writer. I'm a writer, but I, I'm a. I mean, you you kind of fall into holes. You, you know. You, Different circumstances create different opportunities. There's no rhyme or reason. As a matter of fact, the more you try to make sense of it, the more your head hurts, you know? <laughs> so, you know, uh, we, we, basically we knew that we had a kindred spirit in a lot of respects. I can't compete with him on the creative level, but he's, you know, we, we clicked. Um, I was working on a project with Troy Nixie, the director. He's a former comic book artist. Um, it was a really visionary fantasy film. And I said, hey, Guillermo, I want you to watch Troy's short film, Latchkey's Lament. He, he did this like short right. film, incredible short film. I brought it to Guillermo and I said, look, we have this other project, I want, take a look at it. And he goes, he looked at the film, loved it, knew Troy's work from the comic book industry and said, I got something else. And then, Don't Be Afraid was mentioned. When the time came to look for directors for Don't Be Afraid, um, a mutual friend, Nick Nunciana from Chud.com, he said to me, what about Troy? Look at his short. He it really came out okay. Looked at the short. I loved it. I guess. I guess before we, we what is Guillermo del Toro's email address and <laughs> his personal <laughs> cell phone number? Because it sounds like you're completely jacked in there. Are you able to really have a, a dialogue with him? Oh yeah. I mean, like yeah. I mean, I've stayed at his house. You know, I've I've you know we're 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 tight. I mean, he's 
this is a man who is, is in a much different headspace now than he was when I met him. I mean, he's a, he's a big brand. Right. And, and, and what I have learned is, if you see how many projects he's attached to, yeah, he's amazing. I mean, he's written three books that are huge sellers. He's, they're doing TV and movies and all this stuff. I mean, you know, I, I have just learned to uh, uh, let let the big bull big bull run. You know, yeah, and and yeah, when yeah. we get to hang out, it's amazing. But and here's a guy who can walk away from a project like The Hobbit and not look back. <laughs> I guess lastly, and that uh, that is your impressions of Planet of the Apes. I'm sorry. Rise, Rise of right. the Planet of the Apes. Um, we saw that movie tonight. I know I was taken with it. Uh, what What are your thoughts on? I that? was very skeptical. Um, I liked the original series. I did not. I did not like the remake, the Tim Burton remake, that much. But I never felt like it was one of those hallowed properties that couldn't be remade. But I was a little worried because, first of all, whenever you're dealing with so much, so much rides on the effects and how successful the motion capture is, that could scuttle a great movie right there. Yeah. And then the way that they marketed the film uh, really downplayed the character stuff, the, da the James Franco character, uh, his relationship with his father, the, you know, a lot of those things. And they focused on Caesar, obviously, which was the original title for the film anyway. Um, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. But, um, you know, so you get that. And then when they're not showing us the, the stuff that, you know, if people that love film, They'll get. They'll go in the door because of the big action sequences. But the reason they stay is if it clicks. If it. If there's real meat there. If it really connects with them on an emotional level. And and I was worried because of that. So when I saw the film, I was thrilled to see that not only did they completely stick the landing with the effects and the motion capture, but the character stuff's great. You know, it's it's a really solid movie. Actually, I, this release date's weird for that because it's an event movie. <laughs> it's a smarter movie than I expected. Yeah. It's a weird time. It's like we're not usually used to getting these kind of gifts at the end of the summer. Caesar, eat your food. Daddy, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Well, and, and I know we're going to talk about this a little more, but the Tim Burton movie, for me, just lacked so much heart. It just, it, it seemed rather cold and uh, just never really connected. The thing that I, I liked right away about Rise of the Planet of the Apes, though, they kind of got me from the first few shots because it was not CGI landscape. You know, I thought, right. wow, it's the real world. I believe this and it looks gorgeous. And then the motion capture just kind of fit into and they created a, a real yeah. sense of reality. That was a brilliant idea not to use any real primates. I mean, so it, it gets your eye so used to this this way of conveying the information that you, you the suspension of disbelief is there and, and, and you sort of feel kind of at home with it. it, it it's and a I think a, to their credit, they're gonna be some people who leave the theater wondering if all of the primates oh, exactly. actually right. were CGI or some of them well, were real. Did you see really the, uh, the, the feature ad on it on how Weta did it and how they used all of these cameras? It's, uh, there's a bridge scene, for example, and one of the, the problems on shooting CGI, as you guys probably know, I, I have never shot it, but I've read this, is that in direct sunlight, there are a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. And so what they were able to do by using all of this amazing array of cameras and changing the color of the dots mm -hmm. on, uh, on the, the, for the motion capture, they were able to really get inside of cars with these characters and really cover every aspect. It was an amazing thing. Yeah. And, and how often do we see CGI in the bright of day right. like we have in Rise of the Planet? I'll the tell Age? you, there was a scene in the early on in the film, it's a tender moment, it's, with, it's where they're ha we're just kind of interacting with Caesar as a younger animal and the shadows that's the thing because like y you're used to reality and the way that they, he interacted with them in the environment and I know that Andy Serkis was there doing stuff too but the way that the shadows worked it, it really did a lot of extra goodwill towards the movie in terms of saying okay I'm, I'm in love I'm, I, this character is a real character uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna even worry about trying to be a cynical film critic guy Absolutely. and just enjoy it for what it is. But this is the way to start a franchise. It gave us the right origin story and teased what is to come. It's, a, it's the first time yeah. we've had a good prequel. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, true. Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Nick, thanks so much Pleasure. for joining us. Thanks, and uh, the movie is Come Don't on. Be Afraid of the Dark, and uh, it's coming out the 26th. 26th September. You better be there, folks. Of October. No, uh, no, no. Of August. Of August. Of August. <laughs> it's going to still be in theaters in October. The 26th right. of August, uh, and uh, it's uh, going to be very scary for everyone. I, I wrote that, you know, if uh, children see it, they now have another reason to leave the light on. I'm Nick Nunziata, associate producer of Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, and you are watching The Film Fix.